That sound right, Drew? Mm -hmm. It does? Yeah. Huh. Headphones. Headphones sound bad. Yeah. That's Dr. Drew. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. And uh, I'm going to try to plug these things in again. Yeah, really? Good. You hear me okay, huh? Loud and clear, yeah. All right. Well, let me start uh, kicking uh, the console. Yeah, it's good. Maybe something will kick in. Uh, no, no. Like, try this over here. Come here, over here. Here yeah, we right. go. Right. We're moving the uh, headphone jack. Uh, how's that? Hey, testing, no. testing. No. Can you hear me? No. Oh, good times. Maybe it's the headphones themselves. Yeah, you need to start with a story. So can't hear Anderson either. Oh wait, that worked for a second. Uh, 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 I know what this is. It's maybe, this maybe yeah. Anderson's got something in there. No, he says he's got a. He wants you to tell a story. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah, it almost went. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. What'd you do? Jiggle it around? No, I'm pulling it partly out. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Only one ear though now, right? No, no, I got. I think I got both of them. Right. That's nice. All right. Yeah, Anderson's fine. Relax. Yeah, turn my volume down a little bit, just an uh, eighth of the way there. How's that? Yeah, it's sweet. Yeah, good, sir. What'd you do, Drew? Uh, Fix my jack there? Yeah. Got so, my so jack so off? So to speak. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I uh, had, had dinner with your wife last night. That's right. Yeah. Worked on a book all day. Utter hell coming out in April, maybe. Uh, oh, no. And uh, discovered there's a piece of your sort of... Uh, Mid across the Western uh, States tour, you left out the part where you got pulled over by the cops. Oh, I didn't say that part. No, I got the got pulled over by the man. Yeah, what happened? Well, hold on a second. I got to go on a small jag about this. About what? The man or the headphones? People. Uh, oh, geez, these headphones suck, Anderson. It's, it's the jacks, not the. It's not the. No, but not, oh, it's the jacks, not the headphones. Yeah. Right, give me those headphones back right. then. There you go. Try that. No, give. Okay. You got it. That's good. Huh? Yeah, that's nice. All right. All right. Thanks, Anderson. Um, well, let's see. First off, I was on the freeway tonight driving in here on the 10, doing about 80, and some uh, jack-off was in the uh, far left lane doing 56, you know, and hit him with the high beams about eight times to no avail. Oh, oh it, it, it moved him, caused him to slow down. Xenon headlights, three feet behind him. I was, I was, I was like, it was like NASCAR racing, uh -huh. you know I mean? Literally scraping uh, paint. Three feet behind this guy. Listen, all you dick weeds out there, don't drive in the left lane if you're going to go 55. Just don't. Just don't. Just have some quiet dignity and drive in the far right lane where the pussies belong. Just move over. And I know the speed limit is 55 or it's 65, and by cracky, that's the speed you're doing. But understand that there are other people, thrill seekers like myself, crazy, insane maniacs like myself who have cars that can travel safely at 165 miles an hour and, and are willing to take our life on our own hands by breaking the elusive 70 mile an hour barrier. <laughs> All right? So take your <laughs> pussy asses and move them over. I'm going to get killed trying to pass one of these guys because I'm riding up the guy's ass, and when you're up the guy's ass, now you're trying to get around him, but everyone else is flying past at 85, and I can't get around the guy. Yep. Oh, this, this, is, how, this, 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 is, how, this is where they'll find me. Yeah. Trying to pass yeah. somebody who never knew they killed me because yeah. they're just going to keep going. I'll be in hell before they get home. Oh, just, just get out of the left lane. It's the passing lane. It is. Can we... Do we need to get some Germans over here to re to re uh, acquaint people with the left goddamn lane? It's a passing lane. So you were in the left lane in Arizona. Oh, Arizona. Is that where you were? Oh yeah, I, I got a, I got pulled over in Flagstaff. Yeah. Yeah, because you know why? Because uh oh, true. You're not hitting my. No, it didn't mean your, your knee wasn't hitting. Maybe it that? might have. Yeah. <sighs> you're right. Well, no, I can't hear myself no, now. Hold on. Hold on. True. Don't hit the headphone jacks. All right, answer. now we're screwed. All right, right give me the jack that, back. Yeah? Let me try plugging it in over here. All right. All right. Just put it in like yeah, that. I was, yeah, I was doing, like, when I was in Arizona, it's nothing but highway. It's like a... I saw, like, That's a actually the Jim worst Morrison uh, blowing a Indian out there. Yeah. Uh, this doesn't work, Drew. I'll try this. Drew's <laughs> giving me his headphone jack now. Yeah? Now nah, it doesn't work either. 
Hey, hey. Huh? Jiggling it around. Ah, there it is. Huh? There's there part you? of it. Yeah, huh? that's good. I right. hey, don't bang on it anymore. I moved it over there. Thanks, baby. Huh. Yeah, anyway. Uh, in Arizona, you got to go like 100 miles an hour because there's just nothing but highways. It's just straight desert. ahead desert. you got to get through there. And then you come into town, and the, the sign says, you know, it wants you to slow down to 45 now. But I don't like hitting the brake. I just start coasting. Oh, that's when the man got you. That's when the man got me. wife said you argued with him a little bit. No. Mm. No, I kissed ass. She doesn't know my arguing. Yeah. I, I, I kissed ass. All right. And uh, then he she, went back and... Uh, she said, uh, she goes, you know, Adam always seems kind of tired, even when he's wide awake. Yeah, the guy, the guy, <laughs> the guy's like, yeah, you better pull, uh, you better pull over and take a nap. I was like, what do you mean? I'm fine. It's like, you look tired, buddy. Say, this is the look now, you know, it's that, it's that grunge thing I got going on. He's like, yeah, you need to get some sleep. <laughs> I, what am I, Dropey the dog? I, I said I felt fine. I got, I got another hour on the road. Hello, Joe. <laughs> the guy kept telling me how tired I looked. That's he so should funny. give me a complex. Yeah. And then the thing that was funny is when we pulled over, I pulled over on the side of the road, and we were right in front of this big sign that said, uh, um, uh, um, it was a campsite. Yeah. And it said, uh, it said, uh, uh, Ad adult campsite, like oh like like adult entertainment, oh. like it was some kind of crazy swingers campsite. Whoa, it was it was really weird. Wow. Like like you'd pull your trailer in there, you'd you'd hook up your propane and plug your thing in, and then like strippers come by or something. Nah, like one of the neighbors' chicks would come over and give you a Hummer or something. Oh I didn't know what it was. Oh my god! But anyway, the guy pulled me over. And he started. Then he did that thing where he went to go start writing. Went in the back and started writing. Oh yeah. But then he wrote me a warning. Hmm. And, uh, and uh, see, I'll tell you the difference between men and women right now. Guy wrote me a warning. I've never seen a written warning. He had me sign the thing and everything. He let me go. It's Arizona. Yeah. Now, what's my wife do? She takes the warning, folds it, you know, with the writing out, and throws it on the dash. I'm like, listen, are you high? The next time we get pulled over, I don't want this thing flapping around. We got to burn it or eat it or bury it or uh, put it in the coos of one of the adult uh, campers over here. <laughs> so women don't think diabolically like men. My thing is like, I'm gonna get, I may get pulled over in the next 15 minutes. Yeah, quick, get I, out of this. I don't need this thing floating around, floating around the wagon, you know. But uh, yeah, pulled she, over. She pins it to her lapel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this it was a nice uh, souvenir of the trip for her. <laughs> so uh, yeah, got pulled over. Uh, got the. Uh, Let's see. I'd say in the, in the last uh, three to four weeks, got the uh, ticket going through the intersection. Oh, whoa, whoa. I didn't hear about this. What? Flash. Flash ticket. Oh, 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 oh yeah. You're, going you're, through the intersection. get it, though. No front license yeah, plate. I'll give it to you. There's a tip for all of you uh, motorists out there. Take that license plate off the front of your car. Can't get a ticket going through the uh, yeah, intersection. Yeah, illegal passing. On uh, then I got the crazy passing pullover. That was about three or four days ago. And then uh, Arizona. Good time. Yeah. You, you want to talk about Jimmy's show? No or? tickets for many of them, by the way. Good. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. Yeah, it's all I need. <laughs> it's all the fuel I need. Uh, yeah, did Jimmy's show on uh, Friday and Saturday uh, this week. As you guys uh, may have heard, uh, Jimmy Kimmel got himself a new uh, TV show, which is going to be a nightly show at midnight. And uh, it's going to be live. Premiere on Super Bowl uh, Sunday, right? Premiering uh, Super Bowl Sunday. 20. 26th. And, and you uh, be on that first night? No. No. And uh, it'll be, you know, because they don't want it. They don't want me on at the beginning because they don't want to be like a man show thing, you know? Right, right, right. That's what they say to me. At least. Right. Yeah. And After the rousing success of that first run through, <laughs> yeah. you were the co-host. Yeah. So, uh, so <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy did a test show. We did a test show on uh, Friday night, and it uh, really wasn't that great. I was the co-host, and then uh, Saturday night, last night, Drew came by with the old lady and uh, did the. Uh, to the second run through, and it was By good. Himself. Sensational. It was a good show, right? Yeah, very good. Did, well, you only. Now, how much of it did so you the last, see? Like third of it. Got like, meeting comedian and oh, Ben yeah. Stein. It's a very funny. Yeah. Okay. So you thought yeah. it looked good? It looks unbelievable. Looks good, right? Yeah, unbelievable. All right. Yeah, it's a good time. Yeah. All right. So uh, we all have uh, that to look for. And the music is great. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. it'll be a good show. Mm -hmm. I think give uh, Leno and uh, Letterman a run for their money. Mm -hmm. All right. You ready to go here? Here we go. Anything else? No. Didn't miss anything? Uh, Jimmy will be on this show. When, Ann? Uh, Ann? Probably right. be on sometime before then, right? Couldn't hear you. Whatever she said. 20 seconds. 20 second. second. All right. Nah, the day nah, before right. he airs. No, 26. Okay, beg your pardon. The, the Thursday. Yeah. Wednesday before. All right. All right. Let's, uh... 
Lost uh, again in football. I, 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 uh, no, no, no. no, no, no. Don't, I can't don't, go. Don't, all don't. I do is lose. Yeah. That's all I do. That's all I do <laughs> when I give all. That's it. And you know, with the spread, it's a coin toss. You, you, get, you throw a dart on either team any week, and it's, it's basically 50-50. They make their money off the VIG. Right. That's it. It's 50-50. Just lose every single week. You know, every week. This is Amanda. She's 21. She sounds incredibly interested in what you're talking about. It's like, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Amanda? Uh -huh. Yes. You do any, you do any gambling? Hello. Oh boy. Amanda. Yes. Do you do any gambling? No. Ooh. Okay. Hey, Amanda, can you hear us? Okay. Huh? You have trouble hearing right. us? That's just like just hang, hang on, Tricia. Check that out, please, yes. guys. It, here's the problem with our calls. It never seems like a technical problem. Yeah. Like, you don't hear any static on the line. No, it seems There's nothing in the background. There are technical problems in the neuronal connections. Yeah, right. Yeah. Hello? Synapses. Yeah. Hi, Tricia. Hi. What's up? You're 17. Yes, I am. What's up? Uh, I had a question. I just, like, I just recently became sexually active, probably about this summer, like in June or July. And since then, I've done it maybe like six or seven times. All my friends, you know, they're doing it too, and they'll say, the same, how, oh, it feels good or whatever. Same and guy or different guys? It's the same guy, my boyfriend. All right. And it, for some reason, it does not feel good to me. I mean, I can feel it, but it doesn't feel good. You don't have orgasm or anything like that? No, not are you, are you Are you aroused? Is it pleasurable? Well, I mean, it's like I'll get aroused or whatever, and I want to do it, but then once I do, it's like a letdown. I mean, it doesn't feel good. I, is it uh, uncomfortable? No, not really. No. No uh, chafing, <clears throat> nothing like that. Yeah, no. Do you have any history that would lead you to have conflicts or problems having sex? No, not that I know of. You weren't sexually abused or traumatized or anything? No, not at all. And you love this guy? Of course. Well, um, you know, 17-year-old females don't generally don't have the greatest experiences with intercourse. It not doesn't necessarily feel that great. So oh, some, some do, some it does, but the mo majority don't have orgasm. And don't even have that much arousal. It, it, it just the guys don't kind of know what they're doing. Women really don't know how they function yet. It's it's difficult to kind of figure out. Is he attentive? What do you mean? Does he pay attention? Does he you know? Do you tell him what you want? Drew wants to know if he goes down on you. Oh, sometimes, not all the time. Does that do anything for you? Um, a little bit and more than having sex, it does. All right. Why don't you get him to focus on that? Because that's normal. That's most. That's most women their whole life. Yeah. And particularly under the age of 25, or certainly under 22. Yeah. You know, it's almost, I, I don't know, I was trying to think of the uh, metaphor, but it just seems like at 17, that area, uh, it just doesn't get as much blood, as much circulation. <laughs> it, it does not, you, you know what I'm talking about? Like, like, you know what it is? Like, when a woman is 44 years old, that thing is like a red-hot light bulb that's over. Uh, you know the kind they have over the fry bin? That's what it is. You know what I mean? You know the, the warming lights? Yeah. That's what, it's like um, Rudolph's nose in that, in that bad claymation cartoon. Okay. Yeah. But, but at 17, it's like, it's like one of the lights that comes. Uh, it's like, man, like Easy Bake Oven or one of those miniature little Christmas light, tree lights or something. There's barely, this is, it's a night light. Mm-hmm. It's 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 not a Klieg light. Yeah, it's not turned on. It's got a little. It's got some juice flowing through it. You know, you yeah. can kind of tell it's lit up, but it's not glowing. Yeah, it's not yeah. red hot. What is that? I don't know. And there's some women who are that some way. Some women are the ones that are multi orgasmic and whatnot are online right away. So here, okay, let's try one of our things here. All right. Uh, we 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 always concur, by the way, on these percentage things, and yeah. and we don't want to. I know. We don't God we don't, knows. Yeah. Especially Drew over here, a doctor. I got thrown out of Valley College. He has to agree with me. <laughs> right. Where, I'd, where rather be, I'd rather have a different opinion. Right. Okay. Here's, here's my opinion. Right. Uh, 16, 17, 18 years old. You have women who have been abused mm. who do like it because of the abuse. Yeah. You, you have a certain amount, um, a certain percentage who like it just sort of organically, and then there's sort of the rest. Yeah. And uh, the, the group that likes it organically it's about 30 it's about 30 I mean I'm not saying can have an orgasm oh they just kind of likes it, it uh, I'm saying more in the more in the 40 40 percent range so I would have put both the sexual abuse and the organic like it in the 30 percent range 
together. Yeah. together. But, if, but, but, but half 30% of women been sexually abused. No, no. Well, <laughs> uh, that's what I'm trying to... Yeah, that, you're interesting data. Trying yeah. to figure it out. Yeah, that, that, it's hard to come by, actually. All right, so... Well, all right, I'll give you 50%. All right. Oh. I'll give it to you. I thought I just said the F word there. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> I said or you? <laughs> Who? <laughs> I said I'll give you 40, 40%. I know, and I, we got to keep it on the air, but... It, uh, we can't bleep that out, can we, Anderson? Because he was saying no, it. I, I left it. Yeah, he left it, but it it did sound funny. He said F you 40%. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's hear that. I mean, Anderson, I really want to hear that again because it did, it did sound pretty funny. I have no awareness of that. No, I've because you weren't saying it. It, yeah. was just a, it was like, um, you know. Uh, Compound words or something. E yeah, hold your tongue and yeah. say you work at an ash farm. <laughs> you want to do that when you're a kid? Ass on? You were, I work in an ass farm. Uh -huh. it? <laughs> <laughs> I know, you know the thing that's stupid about half these kids' things? What ash farm? There's no ash farm. God, the place has to exist, doesn't it? No, yeah. no. Hey, Sasha. I work on an ass farm. <laughs> you work on an ass farm? <laughs> hey, Adam, no ash farm? No ass farm either. Uh, uh, so, what, all right, fuck uh, you. Uh, oh. <laughs> Let me hear that again. <laughs> again. I had no idea. Okay, here we go. So Listen, all right, fuck you. <laughs> well, how's the rest of it go, though? Let's, let's play it all the way through. Come on. No, actually, I cut some of that afterwards because I, I have to make it look like I at least tried to do something. Oh. Did you hear that, Drew? Yes, I had no but idea. But there's like a G in there. We're cool. Do you see right. how passive-aggressive you are toward me? <laughs> so Listen, all right, fuck you. Yes. Listen, all right, fuck you. <laughs> 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 That's about as funny as the ass farm thing. Yeah. Let me be serious here. Okay, Sasha. Did you hear what he said to me, Sasha? Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm. All right, what's up? You, Dr. Drew. Yeah, what's up? Evidently. Um, well, let's see. I'm, I'm 25. Back in August, I went to my yearly exam, my pap smear or whatever, and had it. Came back abnormal. Came back um, having abnormal cells. Mm -hmm. So I went through the whole process of getting a biopsy, and I ended up having cryosurgery to have part of the cervix removed. Right. That's, that's how you prevent cervical cancer. Yeah. It cures so, it. I'm sorry? That cures it. That's it. Yeah. So Doesn't when I was asking, like, my doctor, like, what causes it and mm -hmm. this and that and whatever, and he really didn't have, like, a direct answer for me. He said that it was just something that everybody got, and I was worried that it was, like, a sexually transmitted disease, and he said they were called talips. I'm like, okay, so I look it up, and it comes back as genital warts. So I asked my doctor again, is this what it is? And, you know, he was like, I warned you not to go on the Internet. You're going to see that. That's not what it is. But then everything else that I'm that I'm looking at and reading points to that direction. No, he and just found Drew, aren't you going to tell her to F off? It's <laughs> <laughs> your usual <laughs> MO. Uh, <laughs> so you, you didn't actually have the kinds of abnormal cells that are associated with the warts. You had a polyp. Yes. That's a different thing. Polyp is a different thing. So that's not, it's, it, you don't think it's going to have anything to do with... Like, well, they can test to see if you have the ward virus, and he should be able to tell you that, whether you have the kinds of abnormalities that are associated with that. If you so do it, I'm sorry. if it is ward virus, it will come back, right? You'll have more problems down the line, and the, the specific type of ward virus tends to determine whether or not you have a significant risk of going on to cervical cancer or not. Is there... That's, I think, one of the main things I was worried about. Was yeah, but he's yeah, telling you, you should trust your doctor. He's telling you you don't have the kinds of changes that are associated with wart virus. You had some sort of abnormal growth, namely a polyp. So, so go back, discuss with them again. Do I have the wart virus or don't I? Did you test for that or didn't you? And if you don't, you don't. All right. Amanda. I'm here. You're 21. What's up? Um, I have had six or seven boyfriends, uh, and I have had sex with none of them but I have never had an orgasm. I've only had sex three times, um, and the orgasm that I, was ha that I had was from oral sex. All righty. All right, what's the question? Uh, I feel very abnormal. I feel like I'm really neurotic. Um, because you can't be sexual with someone that you have a close relationship with? Correct. Mm -hmm. and is that an absolute impossibility yes. for you? Uh, is what an absolute possibility. You, you, it's the people that you form relationships with you can't possibly Exactly, experience. I cannot possibly. Yeah. No. <laughs> that was you earlier. <laughs> uh, okay, have you ever been abused or anything? Uh, no, but that would explain it if I had been, but no. Nothing no. Else. You're all right with guys? You like your dad? Love my dad. Love your dad. Is your mom weird? 
Uh, she's weird, but I love her. Yeah. What, what Eating she... disorder? Oh, no. No. Right, what way is she, no. in what way is she <laughs> weird? In what way is she weird? Uh, she's a very independent, artistic... Um, okay, whatever. Is, is, tells me nothing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, she's I love weird. Those euphemisms. She's Erotic artistic in a good and way. It, she's all right. She's independent and artistic. It's not <laughs> doesn't sound like uh, you're describing someone as too weird, but all right. Well, listen. So uh, you, you're not religious. Uh, no. No one's ever told you to. Uh, you should be on no. medications or anything. How no. about you? Just do you have a relationship right now? No. And what? How do you prevent from being sexual with these guys you get close with? How do you, how do you avoid it? Um. I think that aside from, um, it, you know, not getting close to them physically, purposely, not trying to get too close past um, cuddling and, and kissing, um, I sort of give off this, I emanate this feeling that I have problems with intimacy and that I don't want to be close to them, and they, they somehow sense that. Do you have that problem? Yes. What is the fear if you get involved? I don't know. How about exploring that? How about getting involved and, and trust you know, you're mature, you're 21 years old. It's time to kind of get on with it. Yeah. It's time to go ahead and have a real relationship. You, you can tolerate it. It's all right. Yeah. You're, you've got insight into what's going on. You Sorry. know there's a plot. Eh. But she at least has, should be able to form a decent relationship, talk to the guy about how she's feeling and how difficult it is for her, and ease on in. And, and if she can't tolerate it even then, she can't sort of get used to it, then that's therapy time. I, uh, I wasn't, uh, I, I would have probed a little more, but she was like, no, no, no. 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 Well, she she's keeps people at arm's length for some reason. Yeah, and uh, I, I don't know, Drew, we've never really spoken to a woman who had serious intimacy problems who had a great relationship with her dad and her mom well, was a good person. These aren't necessarily serious intimacy problems. She's able to have a relationship. They're really <clears throat> stable. She's not, you know, in, involved in chaos and drama. Right. She just won't take the plunge. She just, yeah. well, she's scared. There's something. Yeah, there's something. But here's there. the she thing. Should, here's in the reality, she should be able to overcome that. Right. But I could feel her pushing us away. Yeah. Eh. All right. Well, screw her. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Don't call the show. Not good times. She, right. does, she doesn't know she was doing that, though. I mean, she doesn't know she does that to everybody. That, right. Yeah, well, but it's interesting. Pay, pay you can feel it yeah, yeah. over the phone, Except right? I can feel what's... Yeah, you know, my thing is I, I sort of feel what's behind that stuff. Yeah. And there, there's some real sort of uh, vulnerability back there that, that's probably not as big a problem as she thinks it is. Yeah. True tries to see the good in everybody. Yeah. Adam, on the other hand? Well... Just try to keep everybody away from you, right? Nah, just whoever they are. <laughs> but if they're bad, I'd like to see them punished. I like I'm punished. When well, uh, you're in charge. Oh, it's getting... Punishment there. camps. It's coming that day yeah. one night before. <laughs> and you on the uh, tell me to F off a second yeah. ago. Yeah. How's that go? No. Hey, Anderson, no one to do it anymore. All right, we'll be back. Just explaining to Drew uh, what a genius I was during the break. Once again. <laughs> I've never, never proved that before. I don't break up. Hey, my, never uh, mentioned that to me. My he my headphones are out, Drew. Uh, 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 jiggle that around. Did you make uh, contact? No. I just went out on their own? All right, that's good. Go right. there. No? Yes. No? 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 no. Yes? No? No? <laughs> yes? No? No? Yes? Yes? Don't touch. Okay. Oh, my God. Drew has to jiggle around <laughs> the uh, jacks <laughs> oh. here. Oh, that makes good radio. <sighs> or to get the headphones no, no, working. No, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Westwood there 2, we everybody. There we go. Dump and a half. You know, really, these jacks, I'm afraid to say, I need to be replaced. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that could cost $30. I'll get right on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Listen, a Anderson, as the uh, show's engineer, is there a uh, tech department here? Like, uh... Shouldn't these jacks be replaced on this console? Y you'd think, but what it is, is if Lycus wants it, they'll probably get it. I right. just let them ask for whatever they need. Well, oh, really? Can, can, can you, can you like, uh, ask uh, Lycus to uh, ask them to uh, change the jacks? It's a plan. Okay. I'll get right on that. Wow. And uh, we're going to be moving soon anyway, first oh. of the year, right? Oh, first year, yeah, January 1. All right. All right. Oh, wait, what's and the And go start raising hell, please. I don't want to make another phone call about this. Just go go and raise hell. Sarah? Hi, guys. You're, How are you? Good. What's up? 
All right. Well, I want to know maybe, I guess, if I have been abused in my last relationship. All righty. Okay. I had talked to you guys before uh, about this uh, the adult baby fetish. Mm. This guy wants to dress up like a baby? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I stayed for about 18 months, and his parents died in that time and everything, and I stayed and I stayed, and he drank. He was an alcoholic, and I have a good head on my shoulders, <laughs> and I stayed. Now I broke up with him. I went for 18 months. This living proof of yeah you're sharp baby <laughs> you're sharp as a tack <laughs> baby huey's drinking highballs out of a bottle big fat guy in a diaper you're hanging around for a year and a half yeah why well, so i'm having a hard time coping these days i'm kind of depressed and down on myself all right well let me ask a few uh questions just for uh, entertainment purposes about <laughs> this guy okay. now the the sort of adult baby syndrome that's where he wants to does he want to be burped or spanked or grab himself? No, be be um, put in a diaper. Put in a diaper and use the diaper. No, he wouldn't use it, but that okay. that does happen. People he, do that. You've investigated this. I've way. researched. They sell it on eBay. All the products. Uh, That's nice. Uh huh. The the jumbo sized diapers. Everything is crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you can't just wear adult diapers. You got to wear. They got to look like baby diapers. No, I, I don't. It's gotta feel like it. Well, I mean, what do they sell? They gotta have like Barney oh, on big them. Big cloth or? diapers, big. They're parachutes. It's a tactile thing, yeah. Yeah. Tactile. Yeah, but what I'm asking you, Sarah, is you're talking about they sell this stuff on the internet. The adult diapers are plastic. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm they saying look just like baby diapers. The cloth diapers. I know, Sarah, Sarah's. Oh, I don't know what I'm no. talking about. I, I'm just, I'm just saying the adult diapers are no good because they don't seem like a child's diaper. They seem like it to me. Yes, Adam, you're right. No, 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 no. I'm not. Yes, I, I yes. can't. No, I'm not okay. done. The adult diaper, Sarah. Yes. They, they, the depends or attends the plastic adult diaper. There's a million brands out there. Oh boy, I drew. Just shut up. I gotta get to the bottom of this. I got it. Sarah has to understand is, what this I'm is saying. Pathology emerging. Sarah. Yeah. Yes. They, they have legitimate products for aging adults called adult diapers. Yes. Yes, they do have those products. Yeah. But that's not the products these people are interested in. People like your last boyfriend. They use them so as, as, as if they were baby products. Uh, okay. So uh, that's what you were using with him? Yes. You were using Depends or Attend, something like that? Some, yeah, there's yeah. a million okay. brands. Now, Drew, you shut up then because <laughs> now you're confusing me. Well, I thought they used cloth diapers. I know. Well, let's ask her about that. I thought she they, said no. All right. They fine. don't use cloth diapers. They're just like baby diapers. <laughs> All right. Some are silkier than others. So. Hold on a second. Yeah, I know. They don't use cloth diapers. They're just like baby diapers. She's talking about disposable baby diapers. Right. Yeah. Whereas the cloth diapers are something that the old people use? No, it's something babies use. It's only. Only babies use that. All right. Sarah? Yes. I don't know why I got to torture myself all the time okay. on this Anything show. okay. need to know, I'm here to help. Yeah. Yeah. I know, but I don't know if there's... Uh, if the Earth's calendar is long enough for me to get any information out of you. I'm sorry. All right, man. Okay, so this guy did the diaper thing, and then what would you have to do to him? Be his mom? Kind of, yeah. It was the only way for him to really get sexually aroused and mm -hmm. become really erect. Mm -hmm. well, that, that's cold. That's a true fetish. Though. And then you give your baby a BJ? Mm, God, doesn't that sound awful? Yeah. yeah. Or whatever. No, he, he wasn't interested in the sexual acts. He it's all about wearing the diaper. And he wanted to masturbate? Yeah. And uh, would, would he wear like a bonnet or anything, like one of no. those little baby things? No, but some people do I, on the Internet, the research I've right. done. Right, right. I, I, let's stick with him, though, because I, I know other people will do things. Does he, uh, did he have a rattle? No. Nothing else? Pacifier? No. Mm -hmm. Did he want to, like, breastfeed? Yes. He did? Yes. And how'd that work? I enjoy, it felt good, but the whole emotional part freaked me out. And he's in a diaper, and how much, how much does he weigh? 200 pounds. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's great. And, uh, and he's drunk? He likes his beer, yeah. All right. So, uh, what this guy do for a living, just because it'd be funny picturing him doing it. <laughs> he was an engineer. Yeah. It's been Real great. successful. All right, so you got, you got done, you got out of this thing. Yes. And, About uh, three months now. Okay. And what was your question? I'm, and I'm attractive. I'm 25. I'm smart. Believe it or not, 
Um, and I've just been really down on myself. Uh, 25 seems to be a rough age, and I really feel like yeah. I'm not that young anymore. And I'm no, don't get don't get caught up in that. 25 where am stuff. I? That's what I'm asking. I'm just Florida. depressed lately. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, look. Here's what you need to do. You made a mistake with this guy. But I can't get over it. Ooh. Well, why? I can't get over it. You him. feel like you're used? I do, but I'm, I'm still, like, attracted to him in a way, or I just think about him in a way. Mm. And maybe, you know, I, I dated him right after I got out of college. I made a big move. I built my world around him and in a new place. Mm-hmm. But I, I just need to know where I can get help to get over this. Uh, I, I would start with just plain old individual therapy. Straight run of the mill. Can you do that? Okay. And now, would you say that this was kind of abuse? I mean, no, I just. No, I would not say it's abuse. I would. No. I would bet that you might experience this in abandonment or abuse because those sorts of things happened to you in the past. Oh. Uh, That's what you think, Drew? Oh, yeah. Well, just isn't living in Florida a form of abuse? Oh, sure. Yes. Sarah? Yes. Were you abused in the past? I wasn't, but I guess around the age of 12, my dad, um, he had used drugs and he left. Oh, hmm. so he was a drug addict. He was addicted, yeah. Okay. And what was he addicted to? Cocaine. And what kinds of stuff did you observe him doing around you? Did he ever... Nothing, just sleeping a lot and just not being there to help the family. Okay. No, th there's more here, Sarah. What, what any neighbors or kids your own age do weird stuff around you or... No, I was never molested or abused in that way. No, dad ever hit you, got irritable, yelled at you, that kind of thing? No, but I had two brothers who were pretty um, verbally and physically abusive at times. To you? And, yeah. when, and when did that start? Oh, age five, six. All right. All right, mm -hmm. Drew, listen, everyone's got a pain in the ass set of brothers. Yeah, but Sarah's got some some significant, significant stuff going on here. Okay. And, a uh, little individual therapy. Yeah. But don't, but don't get back together with baby Huey. No. Drew's really uh, confounded here. No, I've just got the... You got the heebie-jeebies? Mm. Drew, uh, when Drew's spidey sense starts tingling, that's a bad sign for the caller. That means therapy tonight. <laughs> That's what that means. All right. Let's, All right. let's talk to uh, Daniel, who's 29. Daniel? Yes. What's up? Uh, working. <laughs> Where do you work? I uh, work for a police department in Tennessee. That's great. What do you do over there? Uh, little as possible. <laughs> yeah. Have hey, you guys got those signals that uh, give you in the intersections where you get the ticket in the mail? Uh, they have it in, uh, Germantown, uh, kind of a high-dollar neighborhood, uh, mm -hmm. east of Memphis. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they have the, inter uh, cameras in the intersections, uh. Right. They may, they may you ticket for running the red light. All right. All right. It's uh, ironic that that's in Germantown where they're monitoring you this way and uh, <laughs> looking after the citizens of Germantown. Probably oh. writing people up for having wind chimes hanging on their balconies. Uh, there'll be a book burning this time next week. <laughs> All right, so uh, go ahead. What's your question, Daniel? Uh, I've got a question. Uh, two years ago, after my wife uh, had her second child, it was our first. She had one from a previous relationship. Uh, it's three now. But after... Uh, she had our child two years ago. She started taking a depo Provera shot. Mm -hmm. uh, and ever since then, her sex drive has been little to none. And yeah, I was that's wondering if, if that had anything to do with it. Absolutely. That shot can definitely do that. To some women, not to all. Some actually it increases their sex drive. But predominantly, my experience, it can really shut women down and can predispose them towards depression a little bit. Yeah, uh, uh, I've noticed that she has had, uh, well... I guess it's associated with depression. She she gets angry real easy. Yeah, irritability. So yeah, you really oh, get, get her to talk back, talk to her doctor again about another alternative means of birth control that is not so specifically high dosed progesterone. Maybe something that has some estrogen in it. Okay. Is there, is there anything in particular? Uh, you know, you, you may have to experiment a little bit. Uh, you know, people those triphasic pills tend to work pretty well, but those are pretty powerful progesterones in that. Something with a weaker progesterone. Didn't we go to Germantown in Green Bay? I thought we, we were to, in Wisconsin. No, no, no. We went to Germantown. No, wait a minute. There's no, a no, restaurant no, 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 there. Cleveland or Cincinnati, Cleveland or something. We no, were in no. Ohio, Ohio State. Columbus. We were in Ohio, Columbus. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, really? Yes, yes. Germantown. Yes. <laughs> Who names that? I, they can't do better than Germantown? Oh, a little pretty, Germany. Pretty imaginative. You know? Doesn't sound bad, right? Yeah. They don't really Doesn't have any little, 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 little Italy's. Italy town? I don't know. Chinatown sort of works. Maybe it's because of the movie or something, but Germantown, that doesn't sound right. No. You know what I like? I like, uh, 
You know, the Koreans are all PO'd now at us. Certain ones. Yeah. What was it, South Korea's North pissed? North Korea's pissed, yeah. Oh, North is pissed? Yeah. The South, not big fans of ours either. No, big, it, not it, no, not that big. Not the people. Well, they had a huge rally yesterday on our behalf. Huge. No, that wasn't... Uh, uh, the stories I'm hearing is they're not all crazy about it. Even, even yeah. the people we're sort of good to aren't uh, all that crazy about us. Yeah. Sort of the way... Uh, the way the whole world is. It's the way, you know, when I had buddies who were like 28 and still living at home. And they hate their parents. Right. And I'd say, eh, the guy makes the SUV payment for you. You're living under their house. You're eating for free. Pays your car insurance. He gives you a Visa card. Why do you Why do you resent him so much? And the answer is, that's why. Yeah. But uh, I was thinking, uh, I always, like, I'm always uh, intrigued when uh, when they make these threats. You know, the crazy leaders uh, right. talk about uh, the rain, rain, of raining, rain of fire. <laughs> Really? You know, we're so used to that now. It's the people are like, ah, <laughs> the mother of all wars. Ah. <laughs> I always love it. It's it's kind of like somebody has to really like fully explain that you know whether whether it's uh, one of these uh, crazy backward Middle Eastern places or some uh, warlord in Africa or uh, one of these uh, Korean Korea. Like when they do that, like. Uh, uh, you will, will, you'll open the, the gates to hell and unleash your fury of a thousand devils upon your... T it, someone's got to go, hey, you know what? All we do is laugh when you say stuff. We're like, it's like us talking to a little retarded kid. It's like, here's what it is. The, the captain of the football team is talking to the special ed retard in the electric wheelchair that's using a crazy straw to power. And he's, he's using his mechanical voice going, we will <laughs> unleash the power of Satan and and destroy you. Uh, you will wish you were never. There will be a rain of fire. <laughs> That's a good one, Squirt. <laughs> now, uh, give me your lunch money and uh, go get me a sweet roll from the Snack Shack. All right, pronto. Get rolling. And, and listen, here's what we have to explain. It's like, listen, uh, we will kick your ass and then we'll kick another country's ass on the other side of the world simultaneously and it won't be any big deal. That's uh, that's the rain of fire that we're worried about. <laughs> the rain of fire. <laughs> I just like the threat part of it. Like, I mean, there, somebody has to explain to these guys that it means nothing to us. Zero. It's 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 just fodder. Like, it's enjoyable. Hey, we talk about it on the radio show. Right. Sodom's going to do what? We do what? <laughs> that's a good one. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, uh, take a look at that uh, highway that uh, goes out of Iraq or back to Baghdad or wherever the hell, the uh, highway of uh, death there, all the uh, all your guys dead on it. Is that what you were talking about? Wasn't that, was it? That couldn't have been it. Maybe you didn't say the right thing. Maybe, you you, you know, unleashing the uh, Satan and Satan and Allah and the power and the fury. And it, maybe they wasn't clear who he was unleashing it on. Seems Obviously. like all their guys yeah. are dead. Wow. Right. We kill our guys. Friendly fire, but you didn't kill any of them. Is that what you meant? Us killing our own? Us killing like 28 of our own people? That's what you must have meant. All right. All right, so Korea, let's go. Bring it on. Let's uh, rain a fire. Here we go. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm uh, Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew over there. We're uh, going to hop back to the phones. Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Stephen Baldwin on here tomorrow night from the uh, mole. We'll uh, find out. Celebrity mole, that is. Find out about uh, Kathy Griffin was on the show saying that uh, he strangled her. Nice. Well, then I saw the tape. It didn't look like, you know, he was giving her a back massage and he gave her like a playful strangulation. Mm, interesting. Ooh, Kathy. A little perceptual distortion there. Well, she does enjoy some drama, that Kathy, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, we'll find out the whole story. Laura? Oh, hi. Hey, you're 17. What's up? Um, all right. So, my boyfriend and I had dry sex, which is, I guess, sex with clothes on. Mm -hmm. Um, except for... Well, that's not dry sex. That's dry humping. Um, okay. Because I, if I hear dry sex, I think unlubricated. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, um, well, then we did that, and um, he didn't have any clothes on, and I guess I had my underwear on, and he cummed, and it got all over the place. Done um, cummed? He, it's done cummed. He done cummed. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Um, all right. And I wanted to know if I could get pregnant because of that. <clears throat> where did uh, where did it? It was on your underpants? Uh-huh. 
It would, yes. It would, uh, it would be difficult. Yeah, that would be very unlikely. He, he just did that from uh, rubbing away, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's his a, thing. That's, a, that's his thing. Imagine that. Well, you know, I've met a couple of guys who do this, like, uh, they can get a lap dance and get this. Oh, yeah, sure. Done come to, on a lap dance and stuff. Sense. That makes sense. It's a, talk about a blessing, by the way. <laughs> mm hmm Yeah. I thought you had a ninja penis. You could train to do that kind of thing. No. No, not that good. Can't do that. Yeah. Laura? Yes. Uh, all right. So y you're not pregnant, or you won't get pregnant through uh, through the underpants. I mean, okay. l let's be honest. It's it's <laughs> technically, mathematically possible, but uh, very, very unlikely. Okay, good. But... It sounds like you're getting to the point now where you guys are getting serious. Get some birth control going here, right? Um, yeah, I don't know. We had sex before, but actually we had sex right after. But um, whoa, 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 whoa. Right after you, he, he done come? No. Oh. <laughs> we waited a bit, but yeah. Well, he still would have sperm in his urethra then. Uh-huh. So he deposited. Well, yeah, we'd use protection. Use the condom. Yeah. Okay. All, All right. right. All right. But it so, sounds like maybe it's time to get on the pill, huh? Okay. Or, or at least keep the morning after pill around in case there's a problem getting the condom on or rupturing or whatever. Again, that pill works by preventing ovulation, whether you take it before sex or after sex. works the same way. Right. Yeah, that's the clearest I've said that, I think. Yep. Not, a, not an abortion pill. Janae? Hello. You're 14? Yep. What's up? Well, I've been having a lot of problems at home with my family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, because... When I was, like, younger, uh, my mom used to hit me and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, like, I've been through a lot of counseling because I turned her in for abuse. Wow. Mm -hmm. And at counseling, she denied everything that she's ever done to me. So mm -hmm. I can't really turn to, like, DCFS or anything. You what? But you what? can, con DPSS, the Department what? of Social Services, but you can oh, okay. continue in, in the therapy, right? Yeah. All right. I've been so, in like almost a year's therapy. All right. Keep going with that. Keep going with huh? that. Doesn't doesn't matter what she admits to or denies. You just keep going with the therapy. I know, but I hate it. You hate? Does she continue to hit you? She hasn't lately because she just like had knee surgery. But she <laughs> argues about everything, like about me and stuff. Yeah. This oh, is this your stepmother? Yes. Oh, how did you know that? I said on the screen. Oh, I rarely read the yeah, screen, uh, but Drew, you hit my headphones. So oh, you... I did that time. All right, Better? come on, buddy. I just I moved this one. All right, no, 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 no. Yes. Done. Yes. Yeah. Okay, don't don't want. Come on. No, no. Come on. Watch out. Hmm. You're making me nervous. Janae. Huh? You think you got problems with your abusive stepmother? I got my uh, phone headphone jacks out. That, that's wonderful. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? It's tough. Things are tough all over is what I'm saying. Well, yeah. you, look, you're in therapy. Your stepmom's probably not going to change. Yeah, um, but, like, she does it behind, like, everyone's back. No, I understand that. But you keep talking to your therapist about it. Maybe you and he or she can come up with a plan how, you, how to yeah. deal with that. It's it's oh. not going to be about changing her. It's going to be about you staying in a, in a relationship with someone that can help you. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm also wondering, like, I'm picturing my sister at 14 with yeah. my stepmom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th they, 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 uh, they don't like each other. They're like uh, mascots from opposing teams. Yeah, it's like an organic dislike. Yeah, it's never going to work. Yeah. Not going to work. And Janae, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that uh, Janae's stepmom's not a piece of work and a pain in the ass, but I bet you Janae gets up in her grill a little bit sometimes and... Uh, fires her up a little bit. And Janae? Huh? You need to steer clear of your stepmother. I know, but she gets on my face. How? If you're staying away, how does she get in your face? I said to start things, but... Then you go away. You just get out of there. <sighs> I know. Look, it's not fair, and I'm sorry your dad's a puss, and uh, she's a bitch, and all this kind of stuff. But you gotta just get away and from I'm her. sorry your, what happened to your real mom and everything. But I'm, real mom, yeah. I'm reading on the screen. It says her mom died nine years ago. Oof. Did your mom die nine years ago? Yeah. Okay. And were you guys close? No, I never knew her. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Fine. Good eh, good she riddance. was a druggie. All right, good riddance. Uh -huh. right, Janae, just listen. You got some energy with your stepmom. It's not all her. It's Maybe it's 90% her. Drug addicted mom, biological mom, now the... Okay. Of, oh, listen, stay with your therapy. Stay with your friends. Stay with your school. Get out of there. Go off to college. 
and in the meantime, your job is to avoid. Yeah. I had a stepmom I didn't get along with either. I just open the door, blow right through the house, go right to the room, beat myself uh, to a pulp, <laughs> listen to a Boston record, beat off again, and go to bed. What, when you had no toilet in your, in your garage where you lived? No, I was living in the house, oh, though, for a lot of the, lot of the bad years yeah, there, yeah. too, yeah. Yeah, just put your head down and walk. I, I, I never got along with my stepmom. It's always an argument, always blah, blah, blah. Just walk. Just keep, just keep your head down. If, you, if, you're, if you're heading into the kitchen, you see she's standing in the kitchen making a sandwich, turn around, go back in your room, wait 10 minutes. She's done making her sandwich. You walk in there, get something to eat. There you go. We'll be back. Hey, everybody. Love line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Anderson came in here, gave me a little uh, little change on the uh, headphones. But now I'm bothered by them. Why? They're good. They sound tinny. They sound weird. Those are the best ones we got. All right. That's why it says my name on the top. Headphones, uh, by the way, if you do uh, travel around to uh, radio shows and do uh, radio stations and go do these... Uh, Go to do these uh, morning zoos and things like that. Always a little trouble with the headphones. Premium for headphones, always. Yeah. Yeah. They uh, once in a while I do uh, go go by and see my friends uh, Conway and Steckler over yeah. there on uh, ninety seven point one or KLSX yeah. over there. Yeah. They they got headphones that are uh, like like the ones they give you in uh, the coach class. It's like there's some duct tape on one of them, and it's uh, it's always like. Uh, yeah, yeah, we don't, we know, when we, these are ours, we bring ours in, and then we don't have any really for the, well, these ones work pretty good, we had to tape them back together, yeah. and uh, I always think to myself, just a radio station, right, I mean, the headphones, is that kind of, Drew, is that when people come into the hospital, that is stethoscope, yeah, it's, no, no, this one's, it's wood, it's, it's no good, yeah. it doesn't work, yeah. it doesn't work. I use it 180 times a day, but it's it's not a good one. It broke a long time ago. It, there's certain things that are sort of tools of the trade that are kind of the cost of doing business, yeah. such as headphones. Yeah. You know, our stuff gets stolen all the time. That's one of the reasons. Well, that's interesting. That, that's Pe why I, people, yes, I stuff used to bring my stolen. own headphones, except they would always get stolen. They do get stolen, and I think it frustrates the uh, management when uh, the equipment gets stolen. But you know what my answer to that is? A T.S., Figure out how it, not to get it stolen. It's your goddamn problem. It's like, yeah, yeah, every time we get a good set of cans in here, they get stolen. So we got the ones uh, that were from the Soviet sub <laughs> that we taped together. No one seems to want these things. Your, your argument, your, the way they rectify the situation is we have such junk, no one wants to steal it anymore. That's, that's not a great way to approach business, is it? No. Is it true? No. All right. Jared? Yes. You're 22. Yes, sir. What's up? No, no, man. First of all, I just want to say, Adam, Dr. Drew, I love you guys' the show. Thank Listen you. to it every night. You guys kick ass. All right. Anyways, my question is, uh, I don't I'm needing any therapy or anything. I'm just wondering if you guys have any publications. We wrote a book called, uh, in, uh, simply enough, Adam and Drew Book, is what we called it? I don't know. And then I'm writing a book right now called Utter Hell that will come out either in April or October. Looking like April right now. It's uh, going to be good. Yeah. We worked on it for a year. Yeah. I, unlike the book you and I did, we patched together a couple of months. Well, that thing was a cluster F. <laughs> the, uh, the guys, who, who was the pub who published that book? Can't even remember. Can't remember the house that did that? No. I'm with the Har HarperCollins now. It's a no. lot we, better. We got ours published through Retard House. Yeah. And these guys, eh, just <laughs> idiots, just retards. <laughs> and the whole thing was a mess. The whole thing was a mess. But it was called the Adam and Drew book. I, I mean, I, they're, they're, they sell these books. We don't get paid. I, I don't, you know, who the hell knows? Drew, I, where's our money? How's that work? Yeah. <laughs> oh, who cares? We just got ripped off. Our manager's an idiot. Our our uh, agents at the time were idiots. The publishers were idiots. We were idiots. Everyone was an idiot. And no one ever found out anything, and we probably just got screwed. So there you go. Drew, stay away from the cord there, please. Okay. All right, so, Jared, what did Jared want? I just wonder if we've written anything. No. It's the Adam and Drew book, and then look out for Utter Hell in, in spring. Yeah, there's a book with our picture on it somewhere. You can find it. Yeah, I don't know what it's I'm called. On the web. I think it's just called, yeah, the book. The Adam something. and Drew book, I think, yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, 
go to the phones and speak to Chris, who's 15. Chris? Hi. What's up? Um, I was wondering, like, I'm uncircumcised, and I was wondering if that, like, does any, like, change in, um, when you have sex or anything? You're uncircumcised? Yeah. And what do you mean? Like, does it give you any diseases or anything? Like, is there a, bit, uh, a higher chance of getting it? No. Well, yeah, it, just say no, Jordan. Basically, Let's no. I, I've got a study here I just yanked out from April 2002 that suggested that male circumcision was associated with a reduced risk of penile human papillomavirus, which is the virus that causes cervical cancer yeah. in women. It's not, so there is some not enough, though. Not a big deal. Not a big You're deal. You're fine. Otherwise, it's just a matter of, you know, the problems with the thing narrowing and having difficulty getting the head of the penis. <laughs> you just uh, you pull it back every once in a while, keep it clean. Stretch out. I keep moving. All right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, there's a little, little work there. All right. All right, buddy. It's a good time, so, right? All right, yeah. yeah. All right there, buddy. All right, thanks. All right. Bye. All right, let's talk to Julian. True, Adam. How are you guys doing? Good evening, good. gentlemen. Good. You're 28. What's on? What's up? What's up? <laughs> uh, that, 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 nah. Not really, man. Um, yeah, just keep it clean, buddy. But anyways, I have a question. Um, I've been listening to you guys for the longest, for a pretty good while now. And I always hear how you guys um, bring down guys that are with um, younger girls. Mm. And well, mainly I, we're jealous, but keep going. <laughs> okay. A, B, C, D, C, D. <laughs> oh, um, man. I'm, I'm 28, and I don't look nothing like my age. Right. I'm, I look more like an 18-year-old. He doesn't, his grammar's nothing like his age either. <laughs> so he's got it all covered. Uh -huh. All right, go ahead, Julian. And um, I was just... Basically, I'm, I'm divorced. Mm -hmm. I also have kids. Um, I got married when I was 21 to a 16-year-old. Mm -hmm. oh okay. That, um, that's, that's the age difference we have a problem with. Yeah. It's teenagers I, with adults. And look, and look what's happened to this relationship. Yeah. Right. And I've dated girls my age. I've gone out with... I've had um, been in a relationship with girls my age. Mm -hmm. But they just aren't fast enough for me in life. I mean, I guess... I'm very outgoing. I'm very sportive. Very always yeah. on the on the run. No, yeah, no. A 27 year old woman, one foot in the grave. Right. Using a walker they're to get around. Mellow. They're more mellow. They want more. Yeah, that's tough. They got to get them. Get the uh, they got the adult, the adult diapers right. off of the colostomy bags. They have difficulty getting in and out of the car. That's the whole procedure. Yeah, so you need a couple people to help them. You got to outfit your car with uh, something to get their wheelchair walker. You know, you put that uh, extra rack on the back bumper there. It's difficult. That really kicks around 24, let's be fair. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I know. It's, 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 uh, it's difficult, Julian. I know. You give, you, give a little, uh, you give them a little sex, you break a hip. Mm, right. Um, right, right. I was wondering if there was, mm -hmm. there was something wrong with me. If there was something wrong with me that... Well, how young do you like them? 18 and over, man. I know that it's... Um, I know, but you, you, you as a 20... He, here's, here's what could potentially be wrong with you, but it, it just depends. Um, intellectually, it'd be difficult for me to go out with a teenager, like a 19-year-old. It's emotionally, too, right? Yeah. Or emotionally. Yeah, it, it, right. it would just be, it's just weird to go out with somebody, and I'm, I'm 10 years older than you are, but what I'm, I'm just saying personally, and I think Drew would say the same, that while we're certainly attracted to 14 and 15 year olds, <laughs> speak for yourself on that one. All right, 13 and 14 year olds. Sorry, Drew, I didn't mean to speak for you. Uh, and then emotionally, it's it's kind of weird, and uh, you know, talking about people, you know, trying to have conversations for, with people that were born in uh, 1984, just, just be kind of weird. Yeah. And and uh, and if that's all right with you, it usually means that uh, a you're so advanced and so secure intellectually that you don't need to talk to your woman anyway. Since when did, no, no, no. That. Or, or B, uh, maybe you got the, maybe you think like a 19-year-old too. Or C, maybe women don't really exist to him except as objects, and he just picks his most appealing object, age, and pow, that's that. Yeah, that's that's what I kind of think, like, Julian. Like, uh, like you just sort of look at women as, that's a woman, it's not really an individual. You get person. the youngest, best-looking one you can, and uh, who cares right. what, what you need to talk about. Yeah, listen, that, that's fine for now. You, you, start, you, you theoretically start growing out of that, though. At, uh, 28. Eh. 
I'd give them till 30. Well, see, I don't like 28. I mean, yeah, I'll be responsible. I have a good paying job and everything. Okay. I'll act responsible when I need to act responsible. Listen, date anyone you want who's over 18 that's interested in you and uh, just try not to get them pregnant. Here's a, can, right. can, can't, you, right. can't you clip it at 21? Can't you just... Yeah, so <laughs> this one. Whatever. What are they talking? What are they going to talk about? Twenty-one-year-old and twenty-eight-year-old. That's close. What's Julian talking about? Anyway, with a twenty-eight-year-old anyway. Twenty-eight-year-olds are, are still in an entirely different place emotionally most of the time. Twenty-eight-year-old. I, I guess so, but I'm also starting. I'm also, Drew. Watch. You, you're, you're working the cord there. Yeah, sorry. Anderson's mad at me, but Drew, I'm, here's what I'm going to have to ask you. To please put this just, on top so I don't. No, I. Here. Okay. There now, now it's out. Now no, it's out. Really? Yes. It says, just stay away from that jack completely. Right. Don't don't swivel your chair. Don't don't hit it with your yeah. elbow. Uh, what? What were we talking about? Now you're starting to believe that young women, older men. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm I'm starting to think that maybe people are sort of people. Like uh, I, I don't know how much how much different you are at uh, 28 than you are at 20. Mm, you're different at 18. Think of yourself at 19 versus 30. But, uh, but listen, if you're just stupid straight through. Yeah, the extreme. You, know, you, you went to college and therapy for 10 years during that span, but uh, most people just have a crappy job, you know what I mean? Hmm. Yeah, just let them bang the 19 year olds. Let's get back to the phones here, Drew. Uh, good time. Brian? Yeah. You're 17? Yeah. I got kind of a confusing problem. Mm -hmm. uh, when I'm with my girlfriend or any other girls that I've been with in the past, I can't have an orgasm. Yeah, well, orgasm, huh? During, during sex? Uh, or oral, yeah. How about regular sex? Um, no, I haven't been able to. Have you ever had sex? Yeah. Have you, have you had a uh, particular girlfriend for some period of time and been able to sort of work it out? Um, the girlfriend I've been with now, I've been with for three months, and I have not had sex with her yet. The one before this, I did, and I still wasn't able to finish. And how many right, times? What was my question, though, Drew? He has a girlfriend now for three months, and he has tried having sex with her. It's not working. No, he's not. <laughs> not had a sex with her. I beg your pardon. Right. right. And so, you but no, here's my question. I don't. I, I want to know if you've had a sustained sexual relationship with somebody. Uh, no, not over a couple of months or so. All right, you, you need to do that. that that's what's going to work this out. Okay. Some of you can relax and be, care about somebody and sort of figure this out a little bit. Yeah. It's going to take more than a couple months, too, by the way. And, and there's a whole break-in thing going on where you don't need to ask any questions. You need to get with a woman. You need to experiment. You need to work it out. <laughs> and a lot of things are going to go wrong it, during it, that period. It, it, expand on what you mean by there's a break-in period where you don't have to ask any questions. <laughs> that sounds pretty funny. Well, I just mean... Of yourself, I, I, you should, you I should guess be able unashamed to to sort of explore, right? Unashamed to explore, but but to stay with one woman. And no, when I say where you don't have to ask any questions, I mean don't call the goddamn show. Oh, your penis is not going to work too well. Right? There's, the the women are not going to seem to have the orgasms. Everything's going to be sort of mm, helter skelter for a while until you you know really get on a a rhythm with something. Yeah. You know, it is it is an interesting... Uh, I don't know why I was just thinking of Jimmy's show again, but it uh, it's interesting because, uh, like I said, we did uh, Jimmy's new show. We did a test show on Friday. And it was really like the timing was off, the rhythm was off. Yeah. Uh, all the cues, I mean, all the technical stuff, all the stuff. All the, it's a big production, trying to work stuff out. And uh, I was talking to Jimmy... Uh, the next day, and he was like, he was like pretty down. Hmm. He was like, God, man, that didn't go w well at all. That's that's the first show. You're worried about all the cues and the timing and the when to throw it to commercial and all. You're so caught up in yeah. the nuts and the bolts. Of course, it's hard just to be funny and, and crampy creative. Audience. The crampy audience and me. <laughs> so, oh. so, uh, so he said, yeah. He said, yeah. I know, I know, because this is the way it's been. It's always been with everything, every new show, every every new endeavor. He knew that, or you knew that. Oh, I knew it, yeah, and I course. told it to him. And Why didn't he know that? Drew, hold still, would you please? I, you know it every time, but it's like, uh, there's a difference between knowing it and feeling it, you know? Yeah. And and it's it's hard to tell somebody when they're in the middle of that sort of break-in period that, yeah, this will all be over quickly, and you'll get in your rhythm and all that kind of stuff. And even when you've been through it a few times, it's hard, right. it's hard emotionally. And it'd be nice. You know, I said to him, you know, here's the ironic thing. 
you want to enjoy this part because this is the new part. But you can't enjoy it because there's, there's too much anxiety. Right. But then five years from now, when you're on uh, show 1500, it's just gonna, you're just going to be coming in and mailing it in. I right. mean, you know, there's no, no big difference between show 1500 and show uh, 1501. Mm -hmm. So these are the ones, ironically, that you, you should treasure in a certain sense. But they're the ones that are filled with the most angst and uh, that you can enjoy. You're right. Those are the ones you always remember, those first ones. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I don't. I don't. I don't. You don't want to. No. Albert. Yeah. You're 17. Yeah. Yeah. What's up? Well, I was wondering if masturbation leads to testicle testicle cancer. Mm -hmm. Nope. Huh? No association. Zero. No. Zero. All right. Shut up, you idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Bakersfield. And believe me, that was a scholar from Bakersfield. <laughs> we just played Bakersfield. Oh. Oh, set so place a dump. My God. All right. And believe me, that's how I said it. Uh, Albert, smartest man in Bakersfield. <laughs> Here's how you know everyone in Bakersfield is stupid. They live in Bakersfield. That's all you need to know. They haven't left. And I don't blame the infants, although they, they are the genetic offspring of the people who are stupid enough not to leave Bakersfield, so I don't hold out a lot of hope for them. But you show me someone in their 30s who's living in Bakersfield, I'll show you someone stupid. Yep. Thank you. Kelly? Yeah? You're 21. Right. What's up? And listen, let me say this, by the way. Oh, boy. Don't everyone have pride in their crappy town? I come from North Hollywood. North Hollywood sucks. I have, it's a, it's no, no source of pride. You don't have to have pride just because your parents are stupid enough. My, you know, just because uh, my, my crappy parents squatted some shack that my grandmother let us live in. Oh, boy, I got, I got allegiance to North Hollywood now? You no. Did, you did buy your house kind of close to there. How oh, dare you, Drew? You now, listen, no, nothing wrong with North Hollywood. It's not a great place. Yeah. It's not as bad as Van Nuys. It's not as good as Studio City. But, look, here's all I'm saying. Don't, don't let this be a source of pride for you. This is always stupid people. You, you a-holes who drive a Ford truck and hate Chevy, you guys are retards. You people that live in Bakersfield and want to defend it, retards. Admit a Ford and a Chevy are about the same and admit a Bakersfield sucks and get on with your life. That's what a smart person would do. Thank you. Where are we, Drew? Kelly? Kelly. Kelly? Yes? You're 21. Right. How are you guys? Good. 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 Um, well, I just found out I'm pregnant, and before you start criticizing me for not using birth control, I am on depo Provera or was. And um, my sister and her husband cannot have kids, so I'm just wondering if I do give this baby up for adoption, well, I know I'm going to, like, what are the effects it will have, like, on me every time I see the baby if I give it to my brother and sister? And well, maybe nothing. Maybe you'll know you've made the right choice. You've, you've sort of done something that's on behalf of the child. I, I'm sure you'll have... You'd be possibly conflicted if you don't agree with the way your sister's raising the child or something crazy like that happens. Mm -hmm. But overall, you know you're not ready to be a parent. Your sister is and is a perfect candidate. It's fantastic. You should, okay, you should really you should, also, you should celebrate in your choice here. Now, how did you get pregnant on Depo? What, what happened there? Um, I have no idea. I was talking to um, my cousin, and she got pregnant on Depo also. So How far into that cycle of that shot were you? Um, I... Well, I've been on Depo for about three years, and I just, like, renewed my shot about maybe, like, a month and a half ago. Yeah, and when did you get pregnant? Uh, about three weeks ago. Huh. Wow. All right. Hey, good times. Yeah, and also, can I ask you one more question, please? Yeah. yeah. How do I go about approaching the situation, like, asking her, and y you know what I mean? She doesn't know about this yet. No. Uh, you're going to have to, I don't know what kind of relationship you have with your sister. How old is your sister? Uh, my sister's 25. Can you just go out to lunch and lay it out? Okay. Just put it down. Just put it out there. Just say, I'm, I'm pregnant. I would love to be able to give you this child. What's she think That's about uh, the boy? What's the boyfriend? Do you have a boyfriend? Yeah, I do have a boyfriend. I haven't told him either, so. Does she like him? Your sister? Um, she does. She really likes him. He's a really nice guy. Um, he actually has a daughter with someone else. Ew. Whoa. Loves her to death. And he takes, care of, he takes care of his daughter, but I don't... Like, I know I'm not ready to raise a child. Like, I don't have money. I don't have time. I don't have the patience, so... Yeah. It's fantastic. Like, it's 
great. Good. Uh, you should be. You're a hero. Yeah, you're a, a hero. hero. You are a hero. It's statues in, in Kelly's honor. Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Then Thank listen, you. and uh, yeah, <laughs> I just, I just hope that, uh, you know, I hope the sister doesn't like, uh, you know, it's gonna be weird. Like the kids, like uh, thirteen, and they're like, we're, uh, we're converting him over to the Muslim re religion, and you're like. Oh. Oh, yeah, I'm Episcopalian. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's going Muslim. <laughs> Is that gonna be a little weird? Yeah, that's what I was saying. I hope he doesn't. She doesn't have any weird feelings that the mother raises the child in yeah. some way. That that's why. That's why you don't sell a uh, family member a car. <laughs> You're like, uh, uh, yeah, he said he had a rebuild on the top end. Uh, yeah, I swear to God, I sold a friend of mine a car once, and it's like, yeah, top end's all good. It's all rebuilt. Everything's nice. Blah blah blah. It came to me like a year later, like, eh, blew a head gasket, mm. uh, you said. You wanted me to pay for it. Mm. Who is this? Bob. Uh. You, you don't know this guy. Idiot. Let's take a break. Huh? Yeah. You think that's okay, giving the kid to the sister? I think it's great. You do? Yeah. I think they had to not tell who the parents are. What? It? Say it again? They had to not tell that child who the parent is. Yeah. Yeah, that's how my uh, my mom got raised that way. Yeah, but she well, it wasn't a sister; it was a grandparents. Yeah. Uh, but, but let me ask this, Drew. Yeah. It never. 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 If they decide not to do it, they should never do it. Yeah, but but you know that 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 the uh, mom is going to be visiting and stuff, and eventually he's going to want to say something. Mm. A couple of wine coolers at a Fourth of July thing pulls the kid aside. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. We'll be back. It's Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 LVE 191. All right, let's. Uh, who? What? What? Who are we talking to here? Jeremy. All right, let's uh, go to the phones, speak to Jeremy, who's uh, 29. Jeremy. Hey, how are you doing? Good. So I can solve your problem. Mm hmm. Headphones. Mm -hmm. You should buy yourself a pair of aviation headphones, like Pilot 2s. Mm -hmm. Do those plug into a console? Yeah, they've got um, they've got a quarter-inch audio connector, sort of like a normal stereo connector. And mm -hmm. they've also got the built-in microphone, which you could use if you oh. wanted to. But Oh, with the... Oh, yeah. Oh, Adam. We, we go to sleep. Yes. <laughs> that would sound so horrible. Yeah, yeah. That, that would sound horrible. Well, you could always not use the microphone, but the great thing is they block out a huge amount of sound. I'm a, I'm a student pilot, actually. And right. I didn't say, Go in the plane. Here's the right. comedy. You and I both have those Bose hair headphones. We can just bring those in. Yeah, we should. <laughs> Never thought about it. But they, they would disappear magically. Yeah. Well, you just take them with you. Keep them in your car. Yeah, because those like. have a different kind of plug, too. They have the plug for the airplanes. No. no. The two prong thing. No, the no, one no, prong. no. They got an adapter. You could use them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. one of the plugs is for the, uh, for the headphone part, and one of the plugs is for the microphone part. Yeah, so well, if you don't want to use the microphone, you can just leave that part out. Yeah, I'm, I'm all right. I'm just using Lycus's uh, headphones. It's the jacks that are screwed up around here, not the headphones. Well, that just takes a quick, uh, quick trip down to Radio Shack. But the thing is, I mean, you could spend up to a thousand bucks on this thing. So the yeah. nice thing is, it's also a, it's also a political statement. You're coming in there, you're not using the crappy headphones, but you're saying, you know, these are the headphones that somebody uses who's literally a millionaire. Yeah, but that's true. <laughs> but but they they would they would they would get stolen immediately. Immediately, stuff gets stolen at uh, radio stations because radio people work here, mm. and they're and they're very dicey, seedy group radio folks, loathsome many would call them, with uh, 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 suspect pasts many of them, <laughs> kleptos oh. people that are into uh, strange uh, ritualistic sex a lot of drug addicts. Mm. A lot of think think of the people who roll through uh, radio stations. I've these these a, are uh, essentially uh, unemployable people, are they not, Drew? Um, I, I've certainly seen a few. Let me tell you, I, I've been radio a long time. Yeah, uh, their, their other possible source of employment could be the the video store. Yeah, that specializes in certain fetish videos and things well, like some that. The, some of them could be like roadies for a rock band. This yeah, that, right, that right. Traditional yeah. employment is uh, yeah. would would not be an option of many of these people, no. so they have to steal uh, to, to f supply their drug habit. Oh, I see. Fuels their drug <laughs> Good habit. Good time. All right, let's uh, let's talk to Allison, who's sixteen. Allison. Hey. Hey. 
Okay, I'm really nervous because I'm like on the radio, but um. No. Okay, do you guys? How much time is left in the show? Because my story is kind of long. Twenty nine minutes. You, you've got three minutes though. So. Yeah. What? So go ahead. Okay. Um, I know you guys always say like age differences are really bad, and my boyfriend is 21 and I am 16. Mm-hmm. But I think it might work. But I just want your opinion. Um, we all we both have like the same group of close friends, and we all hang out all the time. Mm-hmm. And I know him for a while. And he's friends with my sister. And um, what grade are you in? I'm in junior college. Whoa! Ooh. So you got yeah. out of school early. I had some medical problems, and the school couldn't accommodate them. High well, school couldn't. What kind of problem you got? I have an eating disorder. Ah. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, and. What they they had toilets at the school, and there was <laughs> too much temptation, <laughs> That's really or funny. You needed treatment and schedule. No, I was in treatment like in and out and in and out, and then it came down to if you don't get better, you have to go to the state hospital because I don't have enough money to pay for a real good pro- inpatient program. And um, I was in treatment for the last time this summer, and the doctor I had doctor visits. I still have doctor visits like at least once a week, and. How do I they f- how do they feel about your current boyfriend? My, they don't know. Well, you need to discuss I, it with them. I, 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 I suspect the reason you're hiding it from them is that you 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 because have. Because I know they'll like judge it. But okay, here's the thing. I hey, hey a, Allison, I, Allison, they're not going to judge it. They're going to try to help you make healthier choices. I know, I know. And if this is a relationship that's not healthy for you, they're going to make note of that. The therapist. Yeah. Okay, can I tell my, tell like the important parts though? All right. When I was 14, I had a boyfriend who was 18, and I knew it was like totally a BS relationship. You know, like by the end of it, I figured out. I was like, dude, this guy's 18. You know. But, um... Did you call yourself, dude? No. <laughs> okay, um, don't make fun of me, please. Um... I, I want to ask a quick question. Uh, Why, how come the junior college can accommodate the visits? You can't get past that. Because you can have, um, different, different school times. I mean, you don't have to go to yeah, school. Yeah, junior college can accommodate it just like a vacant lot can accommodate it. It's just, <laughs> you well, want to show up, take a crap here and bury it and leave? Uh, who cares? <laughs> yeah, junior college can accommodate anything because they don't care. You just show up and leave. About junior college, but I know you don't have to show up. That's how they can accommodate it. <laughs> okay, okay. But anyway. I could accommodate it too, by the way. Just don't come over. Yeah, go ahead. All right, I'm not making fun of you. I'm making fun of junior college. I know we always say about junior college, and I used to say that too. Until yeah, until you went there and realized I was right. Uh, well, I became a dropout, you know. So, okay, well, um, what's the, the important other thing part? Is, There's some he important was a virgin. part. He was a virgin until the day I met him, and I mean, the 21 year old. He was a virgin. He never kissed a girl. He never went out with a girl. Mm-hmm. And I know it's, at first I was like, whoa, that's not true. You know, you're lying to me. But it is true because I know all his friends, and they all like, they're like, yeah, that's the truth. Okay. And. This is going to sound insulting to him, but, you know, because of that, we're kind of at the same level, because I wasn't a virgin before I met him. Right. And we have fun together, and we have conversations that are more than just, like, you know... Did you meet him at college? No. I, I've known him for a long time. Like, my... I went out with this guy for a long time. And, and why do you feel compelled to hide this relationship from your treatment team? Because it's, like... I mean, I know... That's well, it's illegal. Different. It's illegal, and I know they wouldn't approve of it. What does this guy do? He works at a golf course, and <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. Oh my God, he works at an arcade. All right, it works at a golf course. Does he? Does he drive the tractor that collects the balls? No, he doesn't. I swear to God, the most pathetic thing I've ever seen in my life, and this oh, is true. Oh, a good job. Okay. Not you. This is in the modern, the modern age. I saw the guy who collected the golf balls at the driving range, uh, the one that's. Uh, at the Zoo Drive over there in Griffith Park. Yeah. This is about, it's about 11. Eh, it's been more than 10 years now, but I was an adult when I saw this guy. Yeah. I was in my 20s. A uh, guy had a cot mattress strapped to his back and a crash helmet on. <laughs> not not driving not driving the tractor that picked up the range balls. Had a uh, had basically a pooper scooper, pooper scooper yeah. a rake, a hopper that he would dump the things into, had a cot mattress and a motorcycle helmet. Not a full face motorcycle helmet either, by the way. Kept the mattress, kept the backside turned to the range. You know what I mean? He kept that to the T's, had the helmet on. That was his gig. And we heckled him through a fence, by the way. That, uh, you don't get any lower than that. Allison? Okay, I feel retarded because I gave all this detail. Oh, uh, look, who cares? I, I like this guy. He's a, he's, a, he's a virgin and all that. But uh, he is 21. No. You know, he could, he could potentially do some time here. I know. I, uh, although, I wouldn't count that if the guy was a virgin when he met you. Would you, Drew? Yeah. As a judge, I'd toss that one out. Well, I told my mom. I told my mom he was 20. Yeah. 
because I didn't want to tell her he, he was 21, because I don't know. That's right, like right. Adult, adult. Right. And um, I told her everything, like, and she... <sighs> He treats me a lot better than my yeah. last boyfriend. All right, listen, Allison, here's the thing. Uh, the guy's 21, you're 16. That's too big, a, too big an age difference. The fact that the guy's a virgin, though, shaves like three years off his age for me. And can, even, even Drew kind of has a, eh, what are you going to do? But uh, you need to talk, you need to open up to your therapist yeah, about that's, this. that's the important thing. You need to focus on your eating disorder. That, yeah. That's number one. Yeah, tell the people, d d you're as sick as your secrets as a stay in treatment, and uh, you keep those kinds of secrets. Maybe, maybe they'll be fine with this guy. Right. Well, here, here we are, who, we, the Adam and I, who pass judgment all night. All night long, and we are okay, sort of. Mostly. What do you think the guy does at the golf course, though? But Works the arcade. Really? The Sells the coins. Prison yeah. cotton. Tokens. Prison cot mattress and uh, crash helmet. It's probably like miniature golf or something. Yeah. Anything worse than that. It's pathetic. The mattress with the helmet. Yeah, yeah. I, I, this is in the modern era. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean. Yeah. Every other, every other driving range in America has the tractor that picks up the balls. You wonder if this guy. It maybe it's like a novel. I didn't know if it was a novel thing. To be funny. To be different? Well, it must have been 100 degrees. It was the middle oh, of the summer. The guy's got a mattress strapped to his back and a crash helmet on. Oh, my God. All right. Here we go. Yeah. Here we got an interesting call here. Terrence is 11. Terrence? Yeah. Oh, you're 11 years old? Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh my, God. my kids are 10. Kids are 10, Drew. Oh. What's happening, Terrence? What grade are you in? The fifth. The fifth grade? Yeah. And it, blah, 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 blah. I, I, I knew about this stuff when I was in the fifth grade. Oh, yes. Yeah, but, you know, we know Are you, you 11? I thought you were 12 in the fifth grade. No, you're 11. True, and I always get into this. So. All right. So, so you, uh, uh, what, did you have a question? Yeah. Well, what are you doing up so late? You're calling from Washington? Washington yeah. State or Washington, D.C.? Washington. Uh, Washington, D.C., where, where, the where, where the president lives? No. Or okay. where the Heshers reside? <laughs> okay, I get the Heshers. Heshers, the okay. Fish. Okay. Salmons. Right, right, yeah. Okay, so uh, what's the question there, buddy boy? Um, does masturbating shrink your penis? Or Or what? Does it shrink your penis? No, it does not. Okay, does no. it? Uh, no. No, okay. but the, the, you're too young for that stuff, aren't you? What's your favorite PlayStation 2 game? Uh, I don't have a PlayStation <gasps> 2. Game Boy? Oh. Game Boy? No, PlayStation. Well, you're calling PlayStation. him gay? PlayStation. Because he doesn't have a, a PlayStation? Yeah. What's your favorite PlayStation game? Motocross Mania. Nice. Motocross Mania. And and uh, you have any girlfriends? Yeah. Ooh. Heather. Heather. Yeah. But you're not you're not thinking about masturbating at this uh, young age, are you? Already have. Already have. Now yeah. that is a dirty little bastard. Did 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 anything anything come out of you? Yeah. P. My friend hit puberty when he was eight. No. Yeah, he had hair, like, on his armpits no. and everything. He so. maybe needed a little uh, endocrine workup. That, that shouldn't be happening at age. Yeah, could, Ar Armenian yeah. kid? Was huh? fe female or male? Uh, male. Male. Yeah. Hmm. Well, what are you doing with your girlfriend? You guys making out? Yeah. What base are you getting to? Uh, the third. Third? No. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, ass. Ass? Yeah. What'd you call, Drew? <laughs> You're 11. Yeah. All right, buddy. Uh, is slow it, down. Th slow take it slow. Down. Take it slow. You, okay. you play some of that PlayStation. Like Yu-Gi-Oh cards? What? Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Yu-Gi-Oh? Yeah. You know what those are? Hey, Terrence. Terrence. Yeah. yeah. Do you like Yu-Gi-Oh cards? Yeah. Yeah, see? What, what cards do you have? Uh, a lot. Like, give me your My best. My favorite is Serpent Night Dragon. Serpent Night Dragon. See, Adam? Yu-Gi-Oh? Yeah. What is that? Where you been? Like I don't care. I don't go in for all this nonsense. My kid's gonna be miserable. Here's a uh, here's a couple of things too. Like I don't care if something's popular. If I label it retard, if if, yeah. if I label it retarded, oh, well, that'll going. stop him from getting into it. I promise. Yes. Oh yeah. Well, it'll be you, real easy. Be I, the I, brakes on I'm it. I'm not buying it yeah. for him. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. No, uh, do you, do you, no, yeah. No. 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 Yeah, yeah. No. No. We'll see. No. Do you remember about three or four years ago they had those finger skateboards? Yes. Oh, Guys yes. were doing tricks with their fingers, oh, and yes. little matchbox size oh, yes. skateboards. 
I labeled that retard him mm -hmm. immediately. Mm -hmm. Now, that would be an example of the things like my kid went, like, I got to give it. No, no, no. That's going to be gone in six months. Yeah, and you'd have a drawer full of them in six months, and there you'd be. No. Oh, yeah. I, I'll well, decide I what's good. I cannot wait until you have kids. I cannot wait. Uh, I'll God decide. almighty, it's going to be decide. one of the most thrilling and exciting times of my life. I'll decide what's oh, good. Will this be good? Uh, it's oh, PlayStation, oh, finally. every game. No, they don't need everything. will be mine. I'm going to build character. <laughs> I will build character. And you'll ones. build Yu-Gi-Oh cards and connects and all no, that. I'm, I'm all down with all those Legos and Erector sets and all that stuff where you make stuff, but... Uh, just sitting there learning how to uh, fire an AK-47 all day long. That's <laughs> video games. Mm. Jesus Christ, I was in uh, Jimmy's dressing yeah, room last night. Sitting, yeah. Drew stopped by. Jimmy's kid was uh, looking. At yeah, was really, I, I know I, I, I don't want to sound like, uh, I don't know, Tipper Gore or something. Or who, who's the wife who's uh, mm. going nuts on this stuff? But uh, stuff's like really incredibly graphically violent. It, it really... Uh, Really, it's just brutal, and uh, and then all the sports stuff is just all about uh, if it's football or hockey, it's just uh, elbows to the face, yeah. And then uh, if it's basketball, it's just jamming in guys' faces and then, and then, and dance, then making fun of dancing them. over them, dancing yeah. over <laughs> them, <laughs> dancing over the d defeated. Uh, wasn't there a time when uh, if you knocked a guy out in the ring or you scored the winning touchdown or you made the winning basket? You weren't supposed to do a victory dance right. in front of the other guy, yeah, wasn't? It was to show sportsmanship. And you're supposed to shake their hand. <laughs> it wasn't. Remember that sort of uh, winning with dignity Generally stuff that everyone yeah, yeah, taught? Yeah. Go shake the guy's hand, kind of thing. You're really supposed to jam the ball and then start yelling in your face and then do a dance. This this is good. All right, this is where we're heading. Yeah. Fantastic. Hey, yo, love line. I'm Adam. There's Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Stephen Baldwin will be in here tomorrow night. We will talk to him about uh, the celebrity Moel. <laughs> What's that? Oh, I don't know. Christ. I'm going to walk around all day like a... Look at that thing on the top of your mouth, on the palate. The roof? roof. The roof of your yeah. mouth. Where roads? Is that your palate? Yeah. Feels like there's a uh, pube stuck on there. It swells in one spot, like? Feels weird. Just feels like there's a hair stuck yeah. in. Yeah. You know that feeling of a little weird little pube hair stuck on the top of your palate where it's a little <laughs> gooey up there? And you're not sure, so you're, you drag your tongue on it a few times. Like, uh, and I got something up there? Or is there something? Am I, am I getting a cold or is there a pube stuck to the roof of my mouth? A uh, cold. No, just, just playing the odds. All right there, buddy. Uh, okay. Hey, good times. Nick? Yeah. You're 20? Yes, I am. What's up? up? Well, I got a problem that's been bothering me for about eight months with my girlfriend. She, um, before she met me for about 10 months, she used a vibrator for about once or between one and three times a day for about 10 months. Uh-huh. And, uh, since then, since we've been together, she is completely desensitized and can't have an orgasm. Mm -hmm. So, what do you mean she's desensitized? What's different now well, about her than before she used the? the well, when I when she when I touch her, it doesn't do anything for her at all. Yeah. Well, maybe it's always been that way. Well, uh, I don't. Maybe she says she's given herself an orgasm one, well, probably about three years ago by touching herself. But you mean without it, without the use of the vibrator? Correct. Yeah, she's and, just somebody that needs that kind of direct stimulation. Needs the vibrator. Why don't you? Uh, get the vibrator involved uh we've talked about it but i don't know she says she wants me to give her an orgasm she says she doesn't want to use it anymore and that you yeah, know does that she say that because you're all freaked out about it a little bit but i also kind of get the feeling that she she says that one day you know down the line she wants me to be the one that gives her an orgasm and not a vibrator yeah, and no one ever has no she's never yeah. an orgasm. Right, no one ever will That's you give her does. you give her oral sex she doesn't like. She doesn't like it. She's very uncomfortable with herself. She doesn't uh, like if, if I go down on her. Nope. She doesn't like it if I. Nope. Nope. Well, if you want. If I touch her, she doesn't. I mean, yeah. she likes it, but she doesn't. Mm. She's very insecure with herself. Mm. So she's Hold on. Secure. Let me convene. Yeah. Let me convene with Drew for a second here. Crazy uh, yeah. one to three. By the way, you tell your boyfriend I'm using the vibrator one to three times a day. Yeah. Could be six. Could be three to six. Yeah. Right. 
then, then every day, then like numb, sort, sort of compulsive, yeah, and then and numb when he touches, feels uncomfortable, weird with what's going down, uh, sexual abuse, yeah, maybe, yeah, Let's see, Nick, Nick, yeah, was there uh, any abuse in her past? No, no, she she says she, I mean, no, there's no abuse, there's nothing weird like that. She's just, she's just a little, she's just very insecure. I don't. Well, uh, insecure people don't generally masturbate three times a day. She doesn't. She doesn't do it anymore. She doesn't. Yeah, I know. But insecure people don't. They don't put together a calendar year. No. Of uh, not having the vibrator ever see the light of day. Yeah, that doesn't. That's not. Doesn't fit. Hmm. Well. You made it funny there, Drew, with the doesn't fit. Uh, I don't know. That ain't freaking me out. <laughs> well, it, it, it. Listen, it. It's not necessarily. She doesn't have a good relationship with her father. I know that. Yeah. She just. They don't get along at all. But mm. I don't think that that has any. Well, well, uh, we're not we're not saying she was abused, for sure. We're just saying there's some issues at hand here, right. and and you can't make your life's work, uh, her, you know, squeezing an orgasm out of her. You, you know what I mean? You 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 need to enjoy her physically. Yeah. You need to communicate. Hey, look, it's it's not going to happen during intercourse. No. It, she doesn't like you to yeah. do during oral oral sex. So your only alternative is to Anal. bring. Well, no, bring the, oh. the vibrator into the whole action. Yeah. Which she seems to be quite adept at that, three times a day. Yeah. Uh -oh. Nick, how old is she? She's 18. All right. Yeah, there's a lot of confusion at 18, yeah, too. Yeah. So here's the deal, Nick. Uh, I know your ego's at stake here, but <laughs> don't, don't invest so much yeah. in this. Everybody, just uh, let everyone be what they want to be. Right. Just work, work with it. Just roll with what is. Yes. Unless they're uh, in that left lane of the uh, freeway, no, then, speed them then up. they got to get the f out of the way. Okay, Terrence, twenty nine. Uh, and let me oh. say, let me say this too, yeah. everyone who's listening and uh, driving. I want to talk to Terrence. We got a couple minutes. Okay, but let me say something very quickly, right. very quickly, Drew. I need out here in California, since it's uh, been legal for seventy five years, to make a right during a red turn when there's no traffic coming, and you've come to a full stop. I'm six cars behind the a-hole who doesn't seem to be aware of this new law that's uh, always been this way and will not turn right. Yes. So I must honk through five cars to get to this guy. Yes. I need the guys behind him to, to lay on the horn a little bit. Yeah. I don't want to do my honking from four cars back and have the guy in front of me give me the, hey, what do you want me to do about it? Here's what I want you to do about it. Honk. Honk. And if you're behind the guy, honk. It's your job. You're his, his, uh, his keeper. He's your ward. You're, you're the custodian of the road now. Get him to shake his ass. And all you pussies who don't see fit to turn right when the signal's red, go. You're holding everyone up. You think I'm rude for honking? How about your rudeness for not letting us get to our job or home or wherever it is we've decided to go, you pussies? Terrence 29. Terrence. Yeah, how you doing? What's Good. going on? Uh, well, it's kind of strange. Uh, I have a brother. I'll try to make it pretty quick. Um, I have a brother that, um, growing up, he's three years younger than me. I uh, went to school in the same town back east. Uh, everything was cool. He sort of disassociated himself, had a group of friends that were into drugs and some fast time. I myself didn't. I always try to include him. Uh, little by little, uh, he got heavier into drugs, kind of disassociated more and more. We moved out to... Uh, San Diego from uh, New York, XYZ. Now uh, my whole family moved to Sacramento. Couldn't find my brother for two years. He wouldn't uh, come to any more family uh, events, no cards, couldn't get in touch with him. Um, finally got a call from him, and he thinks he's dying. He's afraid. Um, he won't go to rehab, but uh, when he saw him, and he looks like he just looks horrible. My mom's been taking care of him. He moved in with my parents again. He's 25. And uh, now that they're trying to get him to rehab. They got him off drugs. He was doing heroin and crack and uh, crystal meth and whatnot. He's got, he had speed bumps. He was doing bad speed. And uh, we're just trying to get him to rehab. And, and like I said, uh, they bring him to the doctors. But his whole thing now is since he's 18, he doesn't want to let anyone know what he has or what's going on with his system. So we're afraid that there's some type of other medical things going on. And I just wanted to ask you guys, maybe Dr. Drew, uh, what could arise from crystal meth beyond the addictive traits 
Um, what kind of health things could you be looking at, like liver damage or something like that? Yeah, I get liver disease, but mostly hepatitis C and HIV. Yeah, those are the things that are most common that from these conditions. There's be, there be, in, intravenous use? Yeah, there can be deep-seated infections, various kinds of tuberculosis, and uh, or even heart infection. But they would have put him in the hospital for that. The fact is, he needs. He is probably still doing drugs. That's the reality, and that's why he doesn't want to go into treatment. That's it. And you got to give him a treatment. Period. He may be on methadone. He may be. God knows what he's doing. He's still doing something. Guaranteed. Get him into treatment. There's no discussions with people that are this far gone. They go. Period. And let them there do the evaluations for what he needs medically. And obviously, he needs a tremendous amount of work for. Well, what if he says, "I'm 18. I'm, I'm mellow at home. Well, I'm cool." Uh, that you're not cool. A. B. That's it. You don't eat. You don't have a house. See ya. Go on the street. You that's kick it. him out. Kick him out. That's it. Either, or you go to treatment. Well, yeah. what, what about someone won't turn right at the red even though it's clear? Pull him out of the car and beat the crap out of him. All right. Well, that's the show, Drew. My headphones don't work, but uh, so be it. You start the show. You came in the way you go out the way you came in. That's right, Drew. Yeah. It's very good. Yeah. We'll clean that up in post. Please, please. Yeah. So until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. No. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Ingle. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.